Today's kind of a sad day for me. Today I'm going to sell a car. I don't do that very often, but I am completely out of room right now. Let's take a look at which car it is. I've decided to sell one of my Austin Cooper S's. I have three Cooper S right now. This one is probably the nicest one. I don't think there's even a rock chip anywhere on it. This one also has period race history. I haven't featured this car in any of my videos, although I think I've had it the entire time that I have been doing these videos. So today I need to get it out, make sure that everything still works, fix anything that's broken, and I'll take you for a drive since I've never featured this on my channel before. It didn't start up right away. I'm going to put a battery charger on it. And while I'm doing that, I'm gonna inflate the tires. They definitely need some air from sitting. While I'm waiting, it'd be a good time to check all the fluids as well. I don't know if you can tell from your vantage point, but the car is leaning towards the right side a little bit. That's because this car has a hydroelastic suspension and it needs to be pumped up a little bit on the passenger side. I've shown you how to do that in a previous video with this exact car on how to use the original BMC hydroelastic pump. And it looks like since that video a few years ago, it has leaked down just a little bit on this side. Clutch fluid level looks good. So does the brake fluid.
The radiators on these have a little mark where the level should be. Looks like it's spot on. Oil level, maybe half a quart low. Fuel gauge doesn't move, so it probably doesn't work. This probably does have fuel in it, and either the gauge or the sender isn't working. Let's see if it starts now. We see the oil pressure going up. I might get lucky. I popped a boot lid open so that I could take a look at the sender, see what I need to do to fix that. And it looks like it's been disconnected for some reason. There's a lot of corrosion on that pin, so I'll take my wire brush and clean that off first. Let's try it again. Still not moving. I think I should check that the gauge is working properly. And to get to the gauges, you actually do that from the engine bay. The back of those gauges is actually right here behind this flap. The rectangular box you see on the top of the gauge is actually a voltage regulator that is used by both the temperature gauge and the fuel gauge. The threaded circular part and you see in the center of the screen right now is where the speedometer cable plugs in. And then below that is where two wires connect to the fuel gauge. One which is coming from the fuel sender which grounds out the gauge and the other one is having power supplied to it from the voltage regulator. So I need to verify that it is getting both power and ground. And on the terminal that runs to the fuel sender if I ground that out, it should make the fuel gauge read full. Let's test the voltage regulator, make sure that that is working properly. So if we look at the input, and I have the key on right now, so we should see voltage. We can see battery voltage on the input of the regulator. And on the output, looks like it's only supplying 0.7 volts. So I think our voltage regulator is bad. Here's the NOS replacement voltage regulator. The terminals are in a little bit different place. They're not side by side. They're stacked on top of each other. This one will work just fine. Now with the new regulator installed, let's check its voltages. We have an input voltage of 11.5. And on the output, that which runs to the gauges, you can see that the voltage is changing. And this is the correct operation for these voltage stabilizers. If our gauge is good, we should now see it working. And yes, on the inside of the car, we can see the fuel gauge is now reading something. Looks like I need to hit the fuel station on the test drive. I'm at the petrol station now. We'll see if the fuel gauge goes up after I filled it with fuel, or if I have a problem with the sender as well. I'm using non-ethanol fuel. Ok, 
Yeah, I put almost five gallons into the tank. Let's see if the gauge reads better now. There, the gauge is going up. So the sender is working. Let's see how high it goes. Looks like it's going to go all the way to full. So I think we got that sorted. I've already sold this car, so I don't want to put too many miles on it, but I did want to take it for a test drive, make sure the speedometer is working. I did put a new cable in that so that it would work. I also threw on a new set of brake hoses real quick so that they don't have any problems with that. I don't know how old those brake hoses were. This was an old race car, and I think it might be a little bit upgraded in the engine. It seems very peppy, of course all of these Cooper S's are. These cars are small in size, but they're extremely fast. One of the great things about these cars is you can have fun with them. Go out and tear up the town, you can do so without probably getting too many speeding tickets. It looks fast because it's so small, so hopefully the police just think that it's a small car and you're not actually going as fast as it looks like you're going. These cars are so much fun. This car you can still see the holes in the interior where the roll cage had been bolted on. Although I'm getting rid of this car, I still have two other Cooper S's. So if you want to see more videos with Cooper S's and other cars like this, comment below and click subscribe.